Hey guys, Walls here with a video overview of day one's Of Mice and Men novel study tasks. So we've got uh, Of Mice and Men DGP1 here, uh, right there. Uh, this is uh, the first sentence now. It's not the first sentence in the actual DGP book. It's actually a little farther down. So it's, it's kind of complicated. But uh, when we do a novel study, I like to find DGP sentences that kind of thematically go with the novel in general. And we'll even pull sentences out of the novel to work on those. So this is the first of Mice and Men Daily Grammar Practice Sentence. I've got a video going over Monday's tasks right here. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video, this thing is done uploading to the YouTubes. All right, now let's get into the, the content. So the first thing we're going to do is our common lit assignment for excerpts from Harvest Gypsies. Now this was written by uh, Steinbeck himself, uh, and it's kind of a journalistic endeavor. So Steinbeck wrote this and uh, or published these essays in 1936 in the midst of the Great Depression. That's the same time period where Steinbeck uh, published Of Mice and Men, the novel, and they're both about migrant workers. Now, the, the, uh, the essay that you're going to read on Common Lit kind of gets into this. Uh, the novel is, is a very simple, straightforward novel. It's a very short novel. Uh, we could read it. If, if, if I could sit you guys all down in the cafeteria one day, we could listen to it before lunch. It's a very short novel. Uh, but it's it's heavy. It's got some themes to it. Uh, so as you read Harvest Gypsies, I want you to think about these questions. How do we assign value to individual members of society? So think of society as a as society, a big thing. How does how does our society assign value to its individual members? What are some of the categories? What are some of the 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 requirements uh, that we we put on people to kind of put them? in a specific box, a specific valuation? How do we determine which jobs are more meaningful than others? Uh, so this is very relevant to the novel and, and to the essay that you're gonna read here, but also, I mean, think about in modern times. Uh, we kept hearing the words essential workers being thrown around. Some of you guys might actually be classified as essential workers if you work in uh, grocery stores, things like that. Uh, I think teachers at one point may or may not have uh, classified as essential workers. So. But how do we as a society in general determine which jobs are, are, are more meaningful than others? Is it based upon what the jobs create, what they produce? Is it based upon our perception of the jobs? Can you think of jobs that we perceive as being very valuable and meaningful, but you don't really know what they do? I don't know. Uh, I, I like to think back to, uh, oh, what's, what was that show with the guy? The show with the guy. The guy, he was an opera singer, actually. He was operatically trained. Mike Rowe, uh, Dirty Jobs on the Discovery Channel. Um, love that series. Okay. Do we base our views of people's value based on the work that they do? So, you know, there's this like this meme, you know, you are not what you do. You're a human being in and of yourself. What you do as a human, what your work is, does not define you. We kind of got into that with uh, the previous novel or pre previous story unit with Civil Peace um, you know, I would argue that in civil peace, Jonathan's value didn't come from what he did as a human. It didn't come from his work. His work was secondary to his value as a person. His primary value as a person was a father, was being there for his family. And he didn't care what he did for a living. But then you've got um, Tom from Contents of the Dead Man's Pocket. He kind of placed value on himself based upon the work he was doing. Uh, yeah, interesting thought. So uh, do we base people's value as humans based on their jobs? Now we're gonna we're gonna work with these themes. We're gonna tie them all together throughout the, the, the course of this novel. Like I said, this novel is very short, but it's very big in me in theme. Okay, now uh, I've got a read aloud of the actual thing here, and then I've got a uh, discussion of the questions. I don't give you the answers in this discussion video, but I kind of go over what the questions are asking and kind of go over some of the big ideas in the text itself. Then there's a link to Common Lit, so you can do the reading there. Okay, so now let's get into the novel itself. Read and respond to chapter one. So what I have for you here is a PDF of the novel. You don't have to go out there and buy it or anything like that. And you can even just Google of Mice and Men PDF. And there are, there are lots of bootleg copies on the internet. Uh, I've got a link to a Google Drive folder that has the audio stuff in it. So uh, if you click on that link, it'll take you to a folder. It's got uh, chapter one and two, three and four, part of four, and then five and six here. And if you get into these, um, these are the audio tracks that I, I ripped off of the audiobook CD. Uh, so this is read by Gary Sinise. Uh, Gary Sinise uh, actually acts in the movie as the character George uh, that we'll watch later, and he directs the film that we'll watch later. So Gary Sinise loves this book. He's a, he's a, he's a student of John Steinbeck and his work. Uh, really awesome audiobook version here. So you'll just have to start on track one, and then it just goes from there. 
Uh, so let's go back to the assignment here. And then I've got uh, the, the notes and discussion questions that you guys are going to answer. So if you click on that document, it'll look like this. And this breaks down how Steinbeck sets up each individual part of the, the novel. So he's always going to introduce the setting first. We're going to get very descriptive language of the setting. Uh, and Steinbeck's prose, his, his writing is very poetic. He, he has a lot of figurative language, a lot of descriptive language, very strong action verbs to describe what's happening. So you know, th keep these questions in mind as you read. What's happening as the chapter opens? What is the primary setting of the chapter? And then find an example of descriptive language that helps you experience the chapter setting. Think of this as the striking line. What is a striking line from the description of the, of the setting that makes you go like, whoa? All right, dialogue. After we get the, the introduction of the setting, Steinbeck is going to introduce the characters. And, uh, and as, the, as more characters are introduced, we're going to get more and more interaction between them. And this is a very dialogue-heavy novel. Uh, so um, what uh, Steinbeck does is instead of just telling us what happens, we learn a lot about the, the past and the present and the future of the characters based upon what they're talking about. So you've got to pay very careful attention to the dialogue, but the dialogue is very interesting. There's a, uh, I should say this, there's a lot of profanity in the novel, and we're actually going to use, um, we're actually going to use uh, or discuss his use of profanity as we go through the novel and, and discuss its value. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of slang, a lot of profanity, and then you've got to, you know, think to yourself, you know, does Steinbeck portray these characters in a way that is realistic through dialogue? Uh, and, and we'll have a discussion of that more in, uh, as we get through the novel. Uh, now, uh, you've got to uh, summarize the chapter in a few sentences here at the end. So the, the, the action of the plot uh, moves, or the action of each uh, chapter kind of moves towards the end there. There's the, the, you get the setting, there's dialogue, and then the stuff happens. So at the end of this, I want you to summarize the chapter in a few sentences and kind of work on your foreshadowing. What do you think is going to happen next? Now, after you do this, or as you do this, you've also got your discussion comprehension questions. We're going to talk about these So on the day after I assign each particular, um, oh, what do you call it, uh, chapter. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we will go over these in class together, but this is, just, again, to help you focus on key details of the story as you read it. All right, so there's an overview of what we are working on today and tomorrow. Hope you guys uh, are doing well. If you have any questions, please let me know. And, uh, oh, one, one other quick thing. What did I do here? Uh, I also posted an, a thing here. Ah, no, that's not it. Ah, right here. Constructive response question overview. So if you're still, if you're still uh, working through the, the comparison questions from last week, check out this video. Uh, it kind of goes over what it is I'm looking for in constructive response questions. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or concerns about any of this stuff, guys. Uh, put a comment on something or uh, send me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you guys are doing, uh, doing well and I'll talk to you again soon.